Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Rents here, host of the Raiders Reporter. Coming up here on today's show, we're going to get into the latest on J.J. McCarthy, Jordan Travis, Aiden O'Connell, Gardner Minshew, and Isaiah Polomeo. A lot of things have happened around the silver and black over the past 24 hours. And on today's show, I really just want to keep you up to date on everything that has happened because I don't know about y'all, I've been watching a lot of March Madness and you might have missed a few things. First thing was, I made a video on this yesterday that the Las Vegas Raiders have re-signed safety Paul Mayo, which I thought was a really good move. This is a young player that can do a lot of different things for you. He can play safety. He can come up, play linebacker, can play box. Like, he can do a lot of different things for a Patrick Graham system. I was a little bit nervous that Las Vegas would not be able to bring him back just for the simple sake of... Could he potentially join his uncle, Kennedy Palomalu, who was the Raiders running back coach last season, who's now with the Seattle Seahawks. In terms of depth, and I'm really giving a lot of credit here to uh, Telesco, because one of the things that he said was he wants to do a good job of keeping his own. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, the Raiders didn't keep Josh Jacobs. It was the smart move to not pay Jacobs the amount of money that the Packers gave him. But for the Raiders, you were able to bring back Andre James. You're able to bring back John Jenkins, Adam Butler. You bring back a guy like Isaiah Polomeo. Some of the moves that they're bringing back might not be splashy, but they're very solid moves here by the Raiders, and I think Delesco deserves a lot of credit there. If you're looking for Raiders news, updates, coverage, wall-to-wall -wall, every single day, we got you covered here on this channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. That way, every time we drop a vid, you don't miss it. I know how much content there is out there, and I appreciate when people take time out of their day to watch our content, and I take even more pride in the fact that people take that second to click subscribe. It helps me. It's how we put a roof over our head. It's how we turn the lights on, food on our table. So if you want to continue to support us, big thing you could do is subscribe. All right, let's get in here to the latest on Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy because today is Michigan's pro day. And even though Telesco and Antonio Pierce are not in attendance, I did find it notable that Raiders quarterback coach Rich Scangarillo and offensive line coach James Craig were there. I expect McCarthy to be a top 10 pick and the more and more rumors that continue to flow out there are like, hey, could the Raiders get McCarthy? Could McCarthy end up going in the top 10? I mean, there's some people that think he's going to go in the top four picks. It just depends how you evaluate quarterback because if you let him sit and I'll call it doing the Jordan Love thing, which there's been so many quarterbacks that have sit for a year or two, then maybe McCarthy could be the right guy in the right system. I don't really think it's what the Raiders should do because that means you're rolling with Gardner or Aiden for this upcoming season, which I've already said I don't really want to do. But McCarthy does have some leadership traits, which are very important to have at a QB. But overall, the skill set is not a quarterback that I personally believe that you should target in round one, let alone in the top 10 picks of the 2024 NFL draft. And I've given my two cents on this. I've talked about McCarthy time and time again. A lot of people have him as a, like I said, top four quarterback in this year's draft. He is number five on my rankings list behind Michael Penix Jr. and behind the top three. But like when I do this show, I don't want to just give y'all my opinion, right? I like to see what y'all have to say. And I'm also going to tell you what some other people in the industry have to say about McCarthy. So if you were the GM, okay, if you're Telesco, you take a step in his shoes. Should the Raiders draft McCarthy if he's there at pick number 13? Everybody thinks that he's going to be gone before 13, but if he's there on the board, quarterback's obviously a big-time team need here. I want you to type D for draft, type P for pass, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this on a later date. And after this YouTube ad break, I'm going to give you my answer. I am telling you right now, if the Raiders took J.J. McCarthy at pick 13, I would be devastated. And I know there's going to be some people out there that want to take him. That's fine. And I know quarterbacks in need. But what I do not want the Raiders to do is fall into a trap that they have fallen in in plenty of years where they draft based on need, not based on best player available. And you can look at some other needs that they have, like corner, offensive line, and I would rather you turn your attention there instead of going out and drafting a quarterback that ultimately I don't think is going to be successful in the NFL. Now, one of the best in the biz is Lance Zerloin, and this is what he has to say on the Michigan quarterback. Quarterback lacking the measurables and splash throws associated with early round quarterbacks, but possesses elements that require more study and consideration. McCarthy lacks frame thickness and a plus arm. He's 
fairly poised in the pocket, but as average as a pocket passer. His ball placement and timing needs to improve. His help mitigate on average operation time due to his windup release. McCarthy doesn't seek to play out of structure, but is fairly consistent at making positive plays when it happens and ramps up his focus late in games and on third downs. He is confident and seems to have the ability to make tight slights and digest it as competitive fuel. McCarthy should continue to improve as a passer, but he fails to stand out in many of the areas that tend to be predictive of top-level success in the NFL. And, I mean, I get it. You're going to take a risk on any player out there, right? But there's a lot of people that do this for a living, and there's some people that are right, there's some people that are wrong, but a lot of the people that I talk to and a lot of the people that I legitimately trust have that feed on McCarthy where it is a unbelievably risky pick, way, way riskier in my book than taking a Panics, than, than going out and taking a Caleb. Like, I think it's safer for the Raiders to trade up all those picks and go get a Jaden Daniels, go get a Drake May, than taking McCarthy at 13. Like, that's how much I am against the Raiders taking the Michigan quarterback. Coming up next here on the show, let's get into the latest around the Florida State quarterback, Jordan Travis, who is another prospect that I think a lot of people are a little bit split on. And realistically, I kind of look at Jordan Travis the same way that I do with J.J. McCarthy, and I'll get into that here in just a moment. But if you don't know, I'm telling you right now, this will be your final day for a chance to get a Christian Wilkins t-shirt. And I know it says double zero, but it's just a stock image holder, if you will, placeholder. He's going to have number 94, but you need to pre-order it now because they will go quickly. So go to chatsports.com slash Wilkins. That link's going to be available to y'all down in the comments and in the description of today's show. I just checked early this morning, and this I'm telling you right now, this is going to be the final day that we're able to show this product here on the show. So if you've been sitting here and you've been like, man, I do want to get my hands on one of these, now is going to be your last opportunity to do so. So again, I'm excited to celebrate Christian Wilkins. I think he's going to be an absolute dog for the silver and black. And now let's face it, we got to be able to win in the trenches, and this is going to be a dope-ass T-shirt. All right, let's go to Jordan Travis here because the Raiders have a top 30 visit with the QB prospect who had a really unfortunate injury. And, you know, this is one of those quarterbacks where I really wish – that he didn't suffer the injury that he did. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of Hendon Hooker's injury where you're like, all right, I didn't know how much I love the quarterback prospect. And then the knee injury happens, the leg injury. And then you're kind of unknowing like what's going to happen. I saw how far Hooker ended up drop, dropping in the draft. And I have Hooker as a much higher graded prospect than I did Jordan Travis, who sure put up some solid numbers this past season with the Seminoles and 20 touchdowns, two interceptions is good, but this is definitely a guy that was able to rely on his defense. Let's go back to my man Lance Zerloin here and see what he has to say on Travis. In a career marked with challenges, Travis showed the resilience to overcome and finish his career playing his best football. He's undersized, but has an adequate arm and can help protect himself with his legs. The footwork isn't always great, but he can throw effectively and fairly accurately as an improviser. Travis doesn't usually beat defenses with pre-snap planning or eye work and can be a step slow to get through progressions and throw with anticipation. His display is good leadership and desires to take care of the football. Travis's traits don't stand out, but his mobility and continued growth as a passer could give him a shot to compete for a spot as a QB2, QB3, if evaluations of his leg injury check out. So, I mean, that's somebody who's telling you right now that, like, let's face it, if his leg injury checks out, he's got a chance to be a QB2, a QB3 in the NFL. And I am kind of on the same board of that. But I also know that there's value in anything. And nobody thought Brock Purdy was going to be the quarterback that he is. So I get people swing and they miss all the time. My question, though, is we talk a lot about the QBs at the top of the draft, right? We always talk about what's going to happen in the round one and two. But we forget about a lot of the later rounds. So let's just say this. If the Raiders wanted to draft Jordan Travis, which round should they do it in? Are they doing it on day one, day two? Should they do it on day three? If the Raiders wanted to draft Jordan Travis, to me, where you start looking at him is the fifth round. Like, which I don't think he's even going to be there in the fifth round, if I'm being honest with you. But based on what the Raiders potentially need, based on the injuries and based on the skill set, and that's a lot of the times the biggest one for me, based on the skill set, I'm not targeting him until round five. Like, you can't look at him on the first two days of the NFL draft. Yes, the knee injury scares me, but even if he would not have sustained that severe injury, 
I'm not looking at him in the first two rounds. I probably wouldn't even have looked at him in the first three rounds, right? So it's an unfortunate part of doing this show, but it is part of the show that I have to do where, you know, you can't always make people happy and tell them what they want to hear. And hopefully Travis doesn't watch this show, and hopefully, realistically, the Raiders don't end up with him because I do not view him as being a legitimate starting quarterback in this league. And if you're Las Vegas, you got your backup. You also have Aiden, like, you need to find a starter, and that's not Jordan Travis. Coming up next here, let's get into the latest around Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew because I'll say there's a new-ish report that is out on both of these guys and what the competition could potentially look like, though. I am, when I, I'm giving air quotes because it's nothing really that we don't already know. So coming up here, the latest on AOC and Gardner Minshew. If you didn't see the report, this one's coming in from the Athletics' Mike Jones, and he said... That who? <laughs> yeah, I actually thought the same thing. That the Raiders, in quotes, like Aiden O'Connell. And that the Raiders are expecting a close competition at quarterback. The Raiders believe AOC has earned the right to compete for the starting job. When you read all of this, and I've seen people on Instagram, Twitter, and recently people have been throwing this in my face going, see Mitch, the Raiders are going to go with Aiden O'Connell. If you don't look at this and go, duh. Right, like the whole joke with the dad joke of what's the most condescending bear? It's a panda. I mean, it's it's a duh type of response here because do the Raiders like Aiden? Of course they like Aiden O'Connell. Do they expect it to be a close competition? Of course, it's Gardner Minshew. And then has he earned the right to compete for a starting job? Yes, every single person earns the right to compete for a starting job. But there is nothing in any report that has come out that even indicates slightly that it's either going to be Aiden's job, it's going to be Gardner's job. The Raiders are still looking for a quarterback in the draft. And anybody that takes these reports and goes, I told you, Aiden's going to be the guy. I just don't understand how you could possibly wrap that around your mind. Like, the Raiders should allow Minshew and Aiden to compete for that quarterback spot. And if this is the only QBs that you have on the roster, hell, even if you draft Jaden Daniels, that's coming from me, even if you draft Jaden, you have a quarterback competition. And if those two guys beat out Jaden, then you give that job to one of those dudes and you let Jaden or whoever else you draft learn behind, learn behind one of those guys because then if Jaden loses out to one of them, he's clearly not ready to start and you can't ruin him, right? So to me, when I think about this quarterback competition, you only have two options to start right now. No disrespect to Anthony Brown, but like, let's keep it a buck here. He's not going to get on the playing. Like, he's not going to get there. AP has said that he's looking for a 10-year starter. Honest conversation, does anybody out there think that Gardner Minshew is a legit 10-year starting quarterback? The answer is no. Does anybody think that Aiden O'Connell is a legit 10-year starting quarterback in the NFL? The answer is no. If you want to go back to 2014 to 2022 of Derek Carr, nine years, here you go. You roll with Gardner, you roll with Aiden O'Connell, but I actually want to win some playoff games. And I don't want a Band-Aid. Antonio Pierce doesn't want a Band-Aid at the quarterback spot. And I know Aiden is a slam dunk dude. I freaking love the vibe that Gardner Minshew brings. But they are not franchise quarterbacks, and they are literally the definition of putting a Band-Aid at the quarterback spot. I find it funny that people are forgetting these two things that literally our head coach said and are only talking about things that are being reported. Let's think about what is actually being said. Actions speak louder than words. I get that. These words, though, to me, are very loud. So go down and predict it right now. Who's going to be the Raiders' starting quarterback in 2024? Put your chips on the table. Let's, let's, let's play a little bit of a game here because I think the answers that you're going to see from me might surprise you a little bit, but you also have to think about odds. And you have to think about what is the most likely thing to happen because that's what this question is. If I have to bet, and I'm saying, like, if I'm going to bet a legit amount of money that could I could use the person that I would be willing to bet on to be the Raiders starting quarterback this upcoming season is Gardner Minshew. To me, he is the most likely but that is solely, and I mean solely, based off of the fact of we don't know who the Raiders quarterback in the draft is going to be. Like, if the Raiders end up drafting Michael Penix Jr., I'm going to say it's going to be Michael Penix Jr. If the Raiders end up drafting Jaden Daniels, I'm going to say it's end up Jaden Daniels. But because we do not know who the Raiders are going to draft or if they even draft a QB, maybe none of the guys that they like are even going to be available, then I'm going to bet my money that Gardner beats out Aiden O'Connell to get that job, which... Ada could get it, sure, but it also wouldn't surprise me if Gardner gets it. At this moment, 
It's a fact because they're the only two quarterbacks left on the roster that Gardner or Aiden are the most likely to get the job. But if any other quarterback gets drafted, which I'm hoping is one of these three, then I'm going to say it's probably going to be one of them.